Hello everyone, it's Sean from Having Fun Repairs, and today I've got a couple cars. What these actually are is um, some electric motorized cars for a uh, bit of kit, uh, dinosaur adventure, track setup, um, whatever this toy was called. It was labeled as a STEM project. Wherein you take these small modular pieces and you build yourself a rather big track for these cars to drive up onto. And one of the tracks actually has a little uh, mechanical switch that you move that allows the car to travel a different route. But the, it's not just a flat track. The track goes up over bridges and etc. It's actually a little fun little toy. I was given these cars to repair um, for a couple reasons. One, I'll turn this on briefly, and you can kind of see the LEDs are not coming out of their holes here, and this one LED broke off, and my son stuck it into this hole here instead of back in the back, but that's all right. So we'll have to take this apart, uh, repair this, and see what we can do with that board. As far as this one goes, uh, it took a fall. I think baby sister got her hands on it and chunked it. And so this plastic piece right here is broken that retains the battery in place. But uh, even if you turn it on, you have one LED that is out right here. So we'll need to find a way to address this. Uh, if I can address it at all, I'm not sure where those little plastic retaining pieces are at. Uh, and then we'll try to repair this where this LED is attached to the board. So, any mini money uh, mo. We'll start off with this one. And first thing we'll do is tear it apart. All right, so there's not a whole lot to this guy. I suppose I didn't need to take out those screws, so I'm gonna keep uh, dirt from building up in here as much as possible. We'll go ahead and return this and screw it back in. So what do we have? Nice little DC motor. Uh, capacitor on there to probably reduce any type of um, interference with any out external electronics. Uh, while the motor is running. Uh, some pretty terrible soldering. Gears. Small little power board here with what looks like a transistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. We've got a little ball bearing in here in order to keep weight on the front side of the car and then here goes the other little board with our LEDs so here's what's occurring we have the positive coming in from our 1.5 volt uh, AA battery there goes the negative side positive goes to this rail on our DC motor negative goes to this terminal on the DC motor and then it comes into this PCB here, positive onto the, zoom in a little bit, the B plus. Is this, uh, 
focusing. Positive onto the B plus right here. That is fed into one side of this inductor. Uh, see the outside hitting this pad. Then negative rail comes to here. Green, green. Then we have our LEDs feeding on to either side of this capacitor. And we have this transistor over here. Here's the one that fell off that we need to resolder. No big deal. It'd be super easy. But essentially what this is doing is it's allowing the it's allowing the voltage uh, to drop at the rate or discharge charge and discharge at the rate it takes to uh, charge and discharge this capacitor here and as you can tell we have uh, two different colors in these light emitting diodes so what will occur as you can tell right here it will go from green to red at the rate of this capacitor charging. Uh, so once you can provide enough four bias for one color, then the capacitor charges and discharges and provides the bias for the other color. And it's just going to keep uh, flip-flopping those back and forth. So we need to resolder this LED into place put this guy back together and get my soldering iron ready Okay, so what I've done is I've soldered these lead, these uh, leads back onto that diode. However, I put on a little bit of heat shrink tubing uh, to hopefully prevent it from falling off again or breaking off again. I think what I need to do now is get these this board oriented on in a manner that it's not going to pop out again. And we'll tack it down with a little bit of glue. Uh, same thing with this LED here. Get it into its home and tack it down with a little bit of glue. All right, one down. And one more to go. Do the same thing, tear it apart, take a look at it. Okay, so we have the same bit of doodads happening here. Same type of PCB, 
LEDs, motor, etc. Uh, and this one just had one non functioning LED. All right, which one is that? So it'll be this left side one over here. And I think I know why it is. So give me a second. So I want to show y'all what I'm seeing on this thing. Zoom in a little bit. And let me connect to... Another device over here, and we're gonna move this. Uh, hold on one second. All right, move this over a little bit. flip this guy over y'all could see exactly what I'm seeing with my eye if you look at this we have a crack on the PCB here so more than likely it's not making a good connection anymore so that's something we're going to need to repair I didn't use the world's best wire to run a jumper on this thing, but eh, good enough to test. And working. Cool. Thing I'm gonna do what I did, same thing I did with the other toy and put a little bit of hot glue down on where all these parts go. And uh, we'll start getting it back together. Well, there we have it, folks. A couple straightforward little repairs. I just ended up putting some hot glue on this side over here. Obviously, that's something I'd have to deal with every time changing batteries, but I'm okay with that. Ian, can you test out your dinosaur car? Let's just make sure it works how it's supposed to. Oh. I think it's a little bit too steep right there. Yeah. Let's see. We'll probably have to make that a little less steep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that All right. Do that. Ollie, will you test out yours over here? Okay, I think I'm going to do it this way. Okay.
All right, cool. Well, ladies and gents, that was a, hopefully a nice little quick repair video. Uh, we were given two toy cars, uh, both with some LED issues, one with slightly more issues than the other. We un, uh, took them apart, found a lovely little oscillating circuit in there, LC circuit, uh, that allowed for uh, the inductor and a capacitor to discharge one another. Uh, which at the juncture of the two colored LEDs inside that uh, little form factor there, one would be forward bias, one would be reverse, and then as the inductor and capacitor were to discharge one discharge and the other one charge, you would see that one of the lights would go into reverse bias and the other one would go into forward bias, and so we would have a different color there, uh, and they would just oscillate back and forth while that charging and discharging cycle continued. Um, if you want to know more about uh, oscillator type circuits, I uh, highly encourage you to look up uh, uh, the different type of um, A-stable, mono-stable uh, multi-vibrators is what they're called, um, as well as uh, they've got other names as well. Uh, flip-flop circuits. A lot of them use 555 timers now versus uh, semiconductors or, uh, resistors, capacitors, blah 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 blah. Uh, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did, uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, please share, subscribe if you're new to this channel. Um, always, you know, always say that uh, never required, you know, uh, but always appreciated. So take care. Bye.